Okay, then we can invite the uh, the next speaker, who is uh, Dr. No, not not yet, not yet. Uh, Gauthier Roussel, who is a PhD candidate from ENS Saclay, focusing on environmental uh, impact of digital technologies and digital materiality. Uh, he is also a designer specialized in uh, digital sustainability. Then the floor is yours, Gauthier. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to speak here. Um, part of my work uh, and of my research, I've been looking at global estimates of ICT and how we are calculating all of that. And um, at some point, I tried to understand like um, how do we find positive impact of ICT? Because whether, whether we want it or not, the, the resources, the labor, uh, the impacts have been there because the infrastructure and the service are already here. So what do we do what the, with the ICT that, that's here and how do we influence how it will develop for the, um, for the rest of years to come? So, so I was looking at positive impacts. How do we calculate that? And uh, the thing is there is very little claims of positive impacts of ICT on other sectors. Um, and actually, the only claims that, they, that uh, there is around about positive impact come from industrial literature. So as a way to start my research on positive impacts, I start to look at the, um, at the claims and at the calculation of existing claims of uh, avoided emissions in the digital sector or thanks to the digital sector. So. When we talk about positive impacts, um, we actually only look most of the time at GAG emissions. Um, the scope is basically linked to um, f uh, final energy consumptions, fuels, electricity, and the GAG emissions that are uh, linked to that. So it's also a, fo a focus on use phase rather than manufacturing or, or end of life, which is quite normal in, uh, in this field. And so we, it means that out of the scope, we are mostly, uh, mostly taking out the primary energy consumption, taking, taking out the um, uh, abiotic resources and water consumption, which, uh, which are normally the things you are looking for when you, when you, when you are doing a life cycle assessment on um, any ICT serv service or product. So when we talk about positive impacts, we are actually just talking about JG emission. That's the first reduction that we have to operate when we are looking at that. So then we need to look uh, where the claims are coming from. My slides are maybe a little, a uh, little small. So if you want to move further, it's, I think it will be the right moment. So if you if you look at the literature that I've been reviewing, I mean, Jacques uh, uh, showed some of the covers before. Obviously, there is a global e-sustainability initiative called GZI. GZI. I don't know how do you how you say it. That created like Smart 2020, Smarter 2020, Smarter 2030. There have been reports also with Accenture and then some reports from uh, the Internal Energy, uh, International uh, energy, energy Agency, Future Earth, and then also another report that is very important and I will look at you with you, which is a GSMA Enablement Effect Report. And it also comes it also influences institutions. For example, if you look at specific um, norms uh, from ITU, the way we are accounting for greenhouse, greenhouse gas emission in ICT sector also have been kind of influenced by this kind of literature. So it's important to look at it. So there is two claims. The first one from GSMA is saying like one ton or one gram, whatever you want, of CO2 equivalent emitted by the digital sector will avoid 10 tons or 10 grams in all the sectors. That's a, that's a claim you're actually, look, uh, you're actually retrieving a lot, in a lot of press, press coverage. Like in France, for example, the CEO of Orange is using that claim very often in media to assure that the digital sector is actually helping transition. The other one is a claim coming from a GISA, more from GISA report saying that um, thanks to the digita digitization, the global emission and the, glob the emission in other sectors will be reducing by uh, 20, up to 20% by 2030. These are the two main claims that have been influencing the debate and the press coverage 
and also the, the idea that digitization is actually helping uh, or is actually pushing in the right direction when we think of climate change policies or transition policies. So, if you, are, if you spend a bit of time in this field, you know that <laughs> mostly everybody criti criticized uh, these reports. Uh, and, not, uh, and there is no scientific literature that I've read, or at least in my knowledge, that have provided global estimates. It doesn't exist so far. And uh, ELT, Biza, Kurama, even uh, Jens Malmodin uh, have all said like these studies cannot be used because of the representativeness of the samples they're using, because they're extra extrapolating case studies to have a global estimate. And also we are using industry literature, which is not scientific literature. A use case from coming from an, uh, a company is not empiric empirical research. Right? We tend to forget about it, but you cannot actually control how use case have been written and how it has been released. So, and they can they, they provide different ways to calculate for it, but yet no estimates have been coming so far. And yet it's been used very widely by the ICT industry. So if we look, I will take like the, mo the two most relevant um, reports so far, Smarter 2030 and the enablement effect. So if you compare the results of avoided emission we claim in these two reports are very different for, uh, I will explain you why just after. Uh, but they look in kind of the same sectors like industry, agriculture, energy, buildings. And then another one which is could, could be called others, which is like transport, living, walking, like ERs and stuff like that. So as you can see, they're not <laughs> really agreeing, uh, at least not even in a, in a, in a scale in, uh, in which it's happening. And also, in absolute value, the enablement effect uh, estimate uh, uh, that digitization, thanks to mobile technologies, could avoid um, a bit more than two gigatons of CO2 equivalents when smarter 2030, estimated by, that 20 th that by 2030, uh, digitization could help reduce uh, 12 gigatons of CO2 equivalent. So it's definitely not the same view. So if we look at methodology of these reports, so when you are calculating avoided emission, you always go from a baseline emission scenario that is business as usual. You always compare yourself to business as usual. Uh, that's how the frameworks works, I don't know why. Uh, but at, at the end it shows you a nice decrease most of the time if you use uh, a plus four degrees uh, emission scenario. In the, kind of, in the case of an enablement effect, Mal they use the uh, ICT footprint coming from Malmodin and they have a scope on 14 countries, six, sector, six sectors leading to a global ex extrapolation. They include rebound effect in a limited way and they're focusing mostly on mobile technologies because GSMA is from telco operators, so they, try, they want to look specifically at the impact of the sector. But there is something tricky about that I'll show you <laughs> in the slide after. So basically, how do they calculate avoided emission? So they will find a factor uh, that is informed by in industry case studies, some scientific publication if they exist. And the origin originality of this report is that they um, did actually um, a global survey of 6,000 people all over the world from the, from the sample of countries that they've been looking, o looking at. So the, the scope is 14 countries, but they did the poll uh, of, uh, with people f coming from nine out of the 14 countries in the, in the study. So based on industry, case on industry case studies, a bit of scientific publication and this poll, they've been actually doing the calculation. So the text is emission factor which is expressed in uh, kilograms uh, CO2 equivalent by the quantity. And the quantity is determined by the connection, by the number of connection of machine to machine connections or the number of smartphones that are actually uh, in uh, use right now in the world according to GSMA database. And by basically doing this multiplication, which aggregates a lot of things as you can imagine, they got avoided emission in every sector. If you look at Smarter 2030, same, they go for a business as usual uh, emission scenario, which is not a <laughs> very, very sad one because it's 63.3 gigatons by 2030. 
this means like basically no reduction and just going uh, reaching for the plus four degrees at the end of, uh, at the end of century. The IST scenario is unknown. It's internal assessment coming from Accenture. Well, I have no idea how they calculate that. And they use nine, nine countries. It's the same scope, like the same countries that have been used uh, in JSMA, except that JSMA had six countries to that. And they're also looking at the same sectors. They don't include rebound effect, but they focus on the all ICT sector. So for them, they use another method that is not, I mean, even uh, GSMA method is a bit better, I guess. So they, they uh, decide of a digitalization impact. Say, saying like, for example, digitalization reduce the number of patients traveling to hospital, thanks to ER solution and so on. They get uh, that from case studies and big data. Then they decide of uh, adoption rates, which is quite tricky for me to understand, which is basically a theoretical model uh, from Gartner it's called the Gartner hype cycle, seeing that a technology is adopted very quickly, then it decreases, and then it's slowly being adopted. This is a theoretical model. There is no, it's not an empirical model. And they calculate adoption rate for OCDE countries and non-OCDE countries. From that, they calculate, they add the reduction of emission that is informed by the case studies that they use and they apply that, apply that to, a, to a baseline. So basically, if you think that globally, the average distance to an hospital is 34 kilometers, that there is that much, that 90 million patients every year, and the emission per kilometer is two, uh, two kilograms, then you got your emission, your uh, avoided emission thanks to digitization. It all, it all works if you, if you uh, think that the adoption rate works globally in every country, in every scenario, in every health system, and that the data from your use cases can be applied to uh, globally. For GSMA, the, I just put this slide because it's a weird one, I mean, because it has to be understood. The one to 10 ratio comes from a very weird allocation from the report. Basically, they're just comparing the footprint of operators, but reclaiming all the avoided emission that, are, that can be caused by the ICT sector. So basically, they are showing the less to reclaim the, the, uh, the biggest. And they explain that they cannot do like a proper cutoff in the perimeter because uh, it's impossible to know what is critical technology delivering a digital service. So they assume that they can, since uh, operators are critical, they can reclaim the all avoided impact. Which means that theor theoretically data centers can claim the same number and user devices manufacturers can reclaim the same number. So from an accounting perspective, they can all reclaim six, uh, six gigatons. Like basically this number per three, but in reality in, the f in, in physical accounting is definitely not the same. So this ratio means nothing and you have to assume that the way they're calculating avoided emission is right. But if it was right, at best, to looking at the ICT footprint from Almodin to the avoided emission, it will be a ratio from one to two. But we have to believe in the avoided emission from the report. Um, so why I'm doing that is basically these numbers I use all the time. For, and I've been in expert committee from the French government when there is always lobbyists that are using that to to make their case, so basically to leave uh, the ICT sector alone. That's what it's used for. And I've been quite, <laughs> so I was wondering, like, why are they using that? And is it, is it, is it trustworthy? And since it, it will, uh, since it will um, influence political decisions, public policies, it has to be verified. And nobody verified these numbers so far from a, from a, from a deep perspective, from a met methodological perspective. And I'm, I, want to, I wanted to set, up a, uh, to set up a methodology that can be used for these reports and for the next to come, because there will be even more reports coming, claiming for avoided emissions. So we need like a proper, um, proper methodology to fast check them and to actually be able to understand if these reports are trustworthy or not. So basically I'm doing a mi mirror check method on the right, I'm looking at the, I'm taking all the avoided emission data provided by the GSMA report. 
on the, on the world scale, in, by sector, and in every country, country of the scope. And I'm comparing on the left to the physical emission data recorded by IPCC, UN, EU, trustworthy database, exactly on the same scope that they're using, except in that I'm uh, adding Europe to have also a perspective on, a, on, a, on our continent. And also because it's interesting to have to see it at a, at a meso level. So we just do like a fast explanation of one case with, which is transport because I don't have time to explain all, everything. So I'm just taking transport, each country, world, and so the sector will be transport. I will be looking at emission at the world in each country in Europe and comparing to the, to the claims in the GSMA reports in the transport sector. So first on the global data, uh, transport se the emissions from transport sector have been always rising. Uh, for everybody w working in trans transport sector, there is, we know there is no decrease so far. And my data here stops at uh, 20, 2010, but yeah, it hasn't changed so far. It's still the same uh, increase. Knowing that global emission in, uh, uh, in 2018 in the world were like 8.1 uh, gigatons, it means that the gross, not the gross rate, it's a mistake, uh, like the emission increased by 21% 20, between uh, 2005 and 2017. According to GSMA data, avoided emission just in 2018 were about 0 0.64 gigatons, which means like 8% of global transport emission. It's, we, cannot assess, we cannot conclude anything from that. It's just, we can just observe it, that there is no, no result. So we can start to look at European data. So it's, this one is a, yeah, there's a big lot of numbers, sorry. So basically, EU emission for the transport sector in, 20, in the 2005 were 979. In 2018, it was 946, so it decreased by 30, 33 megatons in 12 years, or something like about 2.60, uh, megatons a year while the number of vehicles in circulation in Europe have increased of just 1.4% uh, 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 around the same period. According to GSMA, the avoided emission from transport in Europe just in 2018 were about 127 megatons, starting to not really fit. Or at least, it, or it means that emissions from the transport sector have inc increased extraordinarily and it has been hidden by, thanks, to uh, thanks to digitization. Then you can look at national data. So that's, uh, uh, this is not GHG, it's CO2. C 2 emission between 2005 and um, 2017 from transport in all the country of the scope. They have been increasing, increasing mostly everywhere. And I tried to look at an uh, indicator of, that can show like the digitization rates of a country, which is very tricky index to be fair, but it, it has been made by the European Commission. It's called the International Digital Economy and Society Index. And I take the, um, this, rate, this rating from that. To compare, there is a correlation between the indicator and emissions in each country. There is not. But I was curious um, for two countries about South Korea, which is kind of normally like the, um, a lab for digitization, very in advance and so on. And also for United Kingdom, because there is a huge decrease in, fossil, in, uh, as in the CO2 emission in the part I was studying. So maybe there's something happening there that could be used to understand the effect of dig digitization. But for South Korea, emission has increased by 70% in 12 years. And on a wider period, uh, emission has been multiplied almost by three between uh, 1990 and, 2000, uh, and uh, 2017. It's mostly due because the number of vehicles on the road multiplied by 6.6 .6 in the same period, and the freight transport increased, multi was multiplied by six uh, in the same period. So there is something interesting here that can be looked at according to the last presentation, is how digitization is linked to the expansion of uh, freight transport would be actually inter an interesting question. And if you look for United Kingdom, it was actually just my data series that was too short 
because peak, em peak emissions in most countries in, in EU, also for Spain, that is also, also has a kind of the same decrease, peak emission from transport was in 2007, and later on it just decreased a little bit and been completely stable. So if you look, if you start your data series with a peak and until today, it shows a large decrease. But if you start accounting from 1990, it's only decreased by 3%. And emissions from tr domestic transport are unchanged in the UK since 2010. I have enough time, yeah? Good? Fine. Okay. So since I'm, I, I like to, I, I like to, I was a bit of a joker. I wanted to use that uh, the methodology to use it in the other way. And that instead of thinking about avoided emission, I wanted to look at added emission. It might exist. So I use the digital, digitalization impact. Uh, according to McKinsey, digitalization increased offshore oil production. And they said uh, uh, it has been increased by 2% on oil facilities using real-time data and anal digital analysis of its production equipment. So we have plus 2% of producing offshore barrel. So we look at global off offshore barrel production, 9.6 billion a year. You look at the low estimate of a carbon footprint of an offshore barrel, it's 40 kilograms CO2 equivalent. Then maybe we can say that digitization just added 7.84 megatons of CO2 because it helped produce almost 200,000 more barrels. Actually, nobody calculates that because there is no funding to calculate that. <laughs> so I've been actually quite fast, okay. Uh, so my observation from that, um, it, comes from a, it comes from the report that is 80 pages long, so uh, which look at every, um, every sector in, in, every re in each report, and also doing a bit of explanation about how we can create global estimates. Only in French, sorry. Uh, so basically, the two, these two reports, if you take GSMA and GSI, um, they don't see the avoidance in the same sector, and they even contradict each other. Like, for, uh, for example, um, GSMA doesn't see uh, avoided emission in, in agriculture, when, when GSI is actually looking at for a huge potential of avoided emission in the agri agricultural sector. And I've only shown you the transport sector my analysis of the transport sector, but it's actually representative of the results for the all GSMA report and for the all GSI report. And um, at every level, global, European, and national level, it doesn't add up. There is no correlation between digitization and the results they're giving and the emissions in, on each level. Because, and if we look at what are uh, called uh, added effect, uh, added emission or direct effect. We can also think that optimization and efficiency gains can increase material energy and product flow. That's what Jack was saying just before. So in this sense, digitization can add emissions. So how do we account for it? Because the methodology that I used is very bad. It's, it's as bad as the methodology they used for the, uh, for the avoided emission. So we cannot use that one. Or only if we want to play around with with GSMA and GSI, but it will not be proper research. So what are the methodology to actually calculate added emission? Because so far, when we are confronted to this kind of reports, we are confronted to, um, to a partial accounting. We are just going, cr we are just seeing uh, credits, but we don't see the debit. Oh, I don't know say that in English, but we just have the, we just have the, uh, the um, we have expense from one side that are added emission and avoided emission are gains, yeah. So when, whenever you see results from avoided emission, it means it's all, only one part of the accounting. So the, the other part is missing. So from my point of view and from, this, uh, from the research I've been doing so far, there is absolutely no guarantee of emission, of, uh, emission avoidance on the global scale in, thanks to the digital sector. But what is interesting here is that mirroring, this kind of mirroring technique allows you to check what is accounting to physical records. Because carbon accounting is tricky and it, it will get even trickier. 
and it's really easy to change results or to modify results with carbon accounting depending of if you are using some kind of financial mechanism to, uh, to uh, artificially reduce your carbon emissions. But at the end, you always need to check with physical records. And for future reports, if one day <laughs> there, is a, there is actually funding to calculate added emission, we always need to look at avoided emissions and added, em added emission together, not separately, because it will always be a very unfair view of what's happening. And as, uh, and we need much more data to understand that. So yeah, that's it, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Gauthier. Now, yeah, we have the uh, question here at the back. Could you maybe share the mic? Uh, hi, Gauthier. Thank you for your for your talk. I was interested because we heard uh, Stéphane Langer um, talking before, and so he's presenting macroeconomic like methodologies to to actually try to do what you're doing. And I'm just curious: did you look at what she he sorry what he has done, and could it be applicable? Could could that answer to to those questions, and could that provide a methodology to figure out that kind of mess? Uh, yeah. I uh, I've read uh, extensively the work of uh, Tillman Santarius, Stefan Lange, to, to actually reflect on what, what I was doing. But here, I'm doing like a checking method. And, uh, and in, in extension, I'm doing like a, a way to, I'm trying to think of a way of, um, of look at the effect of digitization and only from a very limited scope, what are, uh, which, which, are, which is uh, GHG emissions. Um, I'm not an economist, so I cannot use economics tools because I don't know how to do that. I can just count carbon, basically, and, and water and stuff like that. So my perspective here was just to verify, not to presume, like not to uh, do projection. I don't, I don't do any projection here. Um, the way I can combine is to add economic factors to actually what I'm looking. It's like the number of vehicles in circulation or the number of sales in specific products. But the, um, the more I'm, I'm working in, uh, in this field and the less I'm looking at global estimates, that's why uh, I don't also completely um, use uh, long and sometimes work um, because you can hide so much things using global estimates and using a global scope. Um, and it's much more interesting for me to try to look back to, to, uh, to go back as much as possible close to a specific territory in which I can observe things better. Um, for example, like Jens Malmodin was saying like data center um, accuracy consumption was one, one, one uh, percent of the global consumption. It, it's nothing on a global scale. But if you look at where this consumption is happening, it's actually very concentrated and it creates issues and also perspective on very specific uh, very specific territories so that that's why I don't use macroeconomics I want to go in the field I don't want to look to look from a spreadsheet and that's why I'm trying also like to funnel down to countries and to sectors and now now today I'm working specifically on semiconductors in the Taiwanese industry specifically in Taiwan that's the continuation of that work is actually to go back to the territory. It doesn't really answer your question, but I wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yes, here. Another question? Yes, please, here in front. Um, very interesting presentation, thanks a lot. Um, simple question, did you get a chance to present your result to the French government or the ADME or whatever? Yeah, so because I'm working with Ad ADMA, ADEM, and also working with, I mean, I know some people in uh, what called DINUM, the Interministerial Direction for Digital Services, to get, the, to get them that, but undercover. Like, uh, and also to Orange, like people in Orange knows it. But it has no effects. Uh, I mean, 
in orange, it will not have effect because it, it, it will go against the rationale of the CEO and of the corporation strategy, corporate strategy. But uh, for uh, Adam, it's good because those have empirical evidence. When for, I mean, the next time there will be like a lobbyist from uh, any companies in an expert committee we, in Adam or RCEP or other institution, at least they will know for sure that they cannot trust these numbers. And for the, the governments, and not I don't, don't think it will have enough uh, impact in it or any impact. And maybe a second question. Uh, so the first question was about government. Second question about the industry, leaders, at least the ones that are claiming they are leaders in the sustainability field, like Apple, Google, and mm -hmm. others. Did you get a chance to meet or no, no, change no. your views with them? I mean, I'm just doing that because I want to do it. You know, it's, uh, I need to publish it now. Uh, I need to find the journals and stuff like that. But I do it because I'm curious. And it, it ended up in a report because I just got, <laughs> got dragged away by that. But uh, it will, it, these kind of things have to go slowly. I'm not trying to, go, to do like a press coverage and uh, things like that, online and stuff like that. No, it has to go, I have to work on people slowly to make them understand and to have direct connection with people in the government in specific co companies to show that. But you cannot take away from people that want to, to know, that want to believe it, that digitization is always better in many cases. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they will use accounting, I mean, like uh, GAFAM are huge uh, when it comes to power purchase agreements, uh, renewable energy certificates to, to significantly, significantly lower the carbon footprint using financial mechanism. So for them, everything is all right. And they don't even need to look at avoided emission because they already have tools to decrease our emission from an accounting perspective. And they also decrease their water consumption that way. So it's not very helpful. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Another question or remark from the audience? I would like to really congratulate you for what you do and really highlight the limitation of all of those reports. Because as you said, they are really read those reports that you mentioned in your mm. presentation. They are really read by politicians and by people making decisions at the European level, for example, with the Green Deal. All of those motivations from those policies really come from massively from those kind of reports in which you mention here and you highlight uh, some big, big limitations. Uh, this is very important work. Um, and of course, when you start to discuss with people, it's going to be a fight about numbers. Uh, they will you know, claim benefits and other burdens of those I ICT. But I think that, as mentioned in one of the presentations, ICT is one of the uh, human let's say, activities, one of the domains. Other is transport, other is um, it's energy, for example. And I think that we should maybe think more about history because uh, maybe during this week some people would talk about history, but when you see the history of energy, people were always cli climbing, the, for example, when we start with nuclear power energy, they say, okay, it's going to solve all of the technical problems related to oil. And after now we are talking about renewable energy, saying that it's going to solve problematic introduced by former technologies. But basically when you see the increase of oil is still there. The increase of nuclear energy is still there. Even if you end up with uh, renewable energy, then I think that there is something maybe to study also in in the domain of ICT about this history effect, and see that basically we end up uh, technology instead of uh, you know trying to to solve former problems. And if I can add yes, to that, sure. it's also the, the perimeter of the study. Exactly is going to change immensely in the coming years. I mean, if you just look at transport, um, no, I think from the last report I've seen, like the total cost of, of acquisition of a car, 50% is just electronics. So mm -hmm. at how many percentage do we account a car of being part of ICT or exactly. something like that, or is it still transport? Because a lot of costs so far have been actually pushed into oh. the close boundary of, of sect sector parameters. Mm -hmm. It actually, we need to think about that too. Exactly. Yeah, the perimeter of the studies. Thank you very much, Thank Gautier. You. Thank you. Now, because we have remote.